Hello there! It's nice to be with you again. I hope you're having an amazing day. We're here again, your English learning buddies, Sir DJ and Dan. To make sure you will learn and we will enjoy our English lessons together. So make sure you have your pen and your paper ready. Because once again, we will explore the wonders of this universal language. What's the holdup? Let's go! Let me ask you a very random question. Are you proud to be a Filipino? I'm sure you are. Because why wouldn't you be? There are so many things we should be proud of. We have the best beaches in the world, man. Boracay, El Nido, Coron, Siargao, and more. We love our family. It is the center of the Filipino community. We are religious. Even though we have different beliefs, we are united. Filipinos are world-class. We are competent in so many fields. TGIF, kababayan. Thank God I'm Filipino. Here's another question. How Filipino are you? Do you want to know? Let's find out together. I will be saying something that may or may not apply to you as a Filipino. If you're watching from your TV, here's what we want you to do. If your answer to the question is a no, draw an X on your notebook. If it's a yes, draw a check mark. If you're watching from our online live stream, here's what you'll do. If your answer to my question is no, put a smiley face in the comments. If your answer is a yes, comment with the LOL emoji. Are you ready? Let's play OMG! How Filipino are we? Number 1. This is weird, but whenever you hear pssst, you respond by looking in the direction of where the sound came from. Number 2. You say ano when you can't find the exact word to say. You even mix it up with English. Can you pass me the ano, please? The, the ano, the pepper? Number three. You point with your lips. Where's the phone charger? It's over there. Number four. AC is not AC. You call it aircon. Do you have an AC in here? AC? Ah, you mean aircon. Number five. You love karaoke. Or your neighbor, maybe. And you have a song list in mind whenever there is a karaoke machine. When people ask you to sing, you say no at first. But then you'll say, Sige na nga. And then your song list is revealed as you put in five songs in the queue. Right? Number six. You can eat with your hands. Whether it be a saucy adobo or the runny sinigang soup, you love to eat using your hands. Number seven, ba 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 ba, ba ba ba. If you can understand this, then it's a yes. Isn't it amazing how we can understand the repetition of the syllable ba? TGIF, man. Thank God I'm Filipino. The next items are tough, but please be honest about it. Ready? Here it goes. Number eight. You know our national anthem by heart. Do you miss the flag ceremonies at school? Dan and I sure do. Number nine. You can recite the Panatang Makabayan. Oh no, I hope you can recite it correctly. It's a must for us Filipinos. And finally, number 10. About the Philippine Constitution, you can recite the preamble. Can you? Thank you for playing the game with us. How many of you have 10 yes answers? You are truly Filipino. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Now, let's take a look at numbers 8, 9, and 10. The following are mentioned in those items. The Philippine National Anthem, 
Panatang Makabayan, the Philippine Constitution's preamble. Now, you might be thinking, Sir DJ, why are we talking about these things? Well, that's because these three are examples of the fourth communicative style, the frozen communicative style. Are you up for that? Good! Now let's have a recap of our previous discussions so we can move on to the lesson already. Let's go! What is a communicative style? That's it! It refers to a specific form of language that a speaker utilizes which is characterized by a certain level of formality and informality. Can you remember the five communicative styles that we've mentioned? Very good! They are casual, consultative, formal, frozen, and intimate. You're doing well! Here's my next question. Who do you think are the people who usually utilize the casual communicative style? If you think that the casual communicative style is often used by friends and peers or people who are very familiar with each other and belong to a certain group, then you are correct. Just like what we've discussed in the previous episode, slang, vulgarities and colloquialisms, informal contractions like ain't, don't know, gonna are normal in this type of speech style. What about the consultative communicative style? Where is it present? Absolutely. The consultative communicative style is present in regular classroom discussions and in the following situations as well. Group discussions, doctor to patient, lawyer to client, counselor to client, teacher to student, and expert to apprentice. Unlike the casual style, the consultative style is used in semi-formal communication. This is the normal style one uses when speaking to strangers or persons who are neither acquaintances, nor friends, nor relatives. Our sentences can be longer than the ones we use in the casual style. However, it is still spontaneous because the speaker does not usually plan what he or she wants to say. What about the third one? The formal communicative style. Can you still remember it? What is it about? Formal speeches are straightforward speeches. They are used in speaking to large groups and are impersonal in nature. Where can we use the formal communicative style? Wow, you're learning fast. The formal communicative style can be utilized in meetings, speeches, school lessons, corporate meetings, interviews, sonas, welcome addresses, announcements, orations, scholarly books or articles, research papers, and technical reports. You did great! You made it look so easy! Dan and I are so happy to know that you are indeed working hard to learn the communicative styles. That's a good trait. Remember, if you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. Moving on to the frozen communicative style, this style rarely or never changes. It is frozen in time and content. It is generally used in a very formal setting. This is the most formal communicative style for a respectful situation. It has a fixed and static language and uses long sentences with a good command of grammar. It is the most formal style of communication wherein the audience is not allowed to raise any questions to the speaker. It is present in the Philippine National Anthem, Holy Mass, Pledge of Allegiance, Constitution, Oath, Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and religious rites or rituals. The characteristic of its delivery is monotone. It is called frozen because it already has a pattern that cannot be changed. In written language, 
the frozen style can be found in historical documents. The receivers of this communicative style must take it seriously and pay attention. It is structured and planned by a set of people who are knowledgeable enough about its composition and content. The frozen speech style is also used in declamations or when you are writing a speech for a wide range of people. It must be well planned for it to be very effective. To declaim is to speak rhetorically or to recite something as an exercise of elocution. A declamation is a statement that allows you to deliver a strong speech filled with emotion. So far, we have discussed four communicative styles, namely casual, consultative, formal, and frozen. Dan and I are certain that you know them by now. You guys are good learners. Now, for our short and fun activity, I will be showing you pictures, and then you'll try to tell me what communicative style would best fit the situation in the image? Can you do that? I'm sure you can. Let's go and play Show Me Your Style. Here's the first one. Hmm, it seems like they are in a classroom where the teacher is delivering her lecture. What communicative style would be best used for this situation? If your answer is formal, then you are correct. School lessons require the formal communicative style. Here's the next one. It looks like these people are having a great time with their friends. What style do you think they are using? Absolutely! They are using the casual style since they are very familiar with each other. The casual communicative style is perfect for them. Great work! What about this one? It seems like one guy is giving advice on how the other guy can handle his finances better. What style should they use? Very good! They should use the consultative style. You're getting really good at this. Let's have the last one. Looks like the priest is reading from the Bible. Obviously, this can be casual. What's that? You think this one is frozen? You got that right! This situation is indeed utilizing the frozen communicative style. Great job, right minds? Wow! Dan and I appreciate your efforts in today's episode. Also, you did very well in our game. You really are smart. We are so proud of you. And that ends our episode today. That was once again a blast. As always, we had so much fun together. Time flies when you're having fun indeed. I hope you had a wonderful time with us, your English learning buddies, Sir DJ and Dan. Stay tuned because in the next episode, we will talk about the last communicative style. Always keep safe guys, keep practicing, and you'll be really good in using the English language in no time. And as I always say, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. See you in the next one. Bye guys!